let's take a look at how we can build a web scraper to do something like tracking the price of an object on a website. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously create whatever UI that you want going on for it. <clears throat> In my case, I'm just using a text edit just to display the price. Um, but you, of course, can put in an input field so the user can put in the URL link if you wanted. <clears throat> and what we do need is an HTTP request with a connected signal. And that connected signal is going to be the request completed. All right, so heading on over to our script, we've got a, a variable that I'm going to call data, and that is just set to a pool string array. And we're going to use that to split up what we get back in order to find the information that we're looking for. URL, again, I do not have any input field for what I'm putting in, so I just went ahead and went on to Etsy and found a, uh, a wall art, a print. And just grab the URL and just stuck it in here. Now, obviously, if you're doing this with a UI where the user inputs it, you're going to have, uh, you're going to call the request here when they press a button. But since I'm not doing that, I'm just going to pull a request as soon as it runs right here in our ready function. Now, obviously, if you want us to check every X amount of time, you would then have a timer go. And every time the timer runs out, You'll call the request. All right. So now for our function here, where our signal is actually connected. The first thing we need to do is we need to uh, get the data out of the body in a format that we can actually read. Because if we were to just print out the body, see print body. If we were to just do that. You see, we, we don't get anything out of here. When we come here, yeah, headers, yeah, all that stuff is never used. But we don't actually get any of this information from the body because we can't read it. So we don't get any of that info. So what we need to do is actually get the info out of that. And for that, I'm using a variable called response. And we set that equal to body dot get underscore string underscore from underscore UTF-8. UTF-8 is uh, like the encoding method uh, that is online with our with uh, with the information. So we're pretty much getting the data out of that as a string and assigning that to response. Now if we were to print the response, you can see we're actually going to have a lot of code here. And what this code is, is this is actually all of the HTML code um, that you would see. And in order to find the information that you're going to need for this next part, you're going to have to go into a website and right click. And show you here in just a moment. There we go. I swapped to uh, desktop capture here for a moment, but see, this is the one I'm using. So say if you wanted to get the price, right, like right here, I'm just going to put my mouse over it, right click. I've got to go into developer tools, but you may not have to and inspect. And we're going to see all the code here on the side, which is the same information we're printing out down here. And what we are looking for is that price here. and as long as you did it over the element, you should actually already be highlighted in the area. And so we can see this is where our price is located. So now we have to somehow navigate our way into this section in order to get this information, our price. Now the section, uh, class, and all that stuff down here is going to be different for every website because every website does it different. Um, but for this example, this is what we're going with. So we'll just switch on back. So if Etsy is in the URL, 
we're going to take that data, we're going to take the response, and we're actually going to split it by that information that we saw here. Remember that information I said that was different for every, uh, every website? I'm using that, everything on that line before the price to split my data. That way the price will start on the next, uh, the next item in this pool string array. And that's being assigned to our data. Now to get uh, the price, I'm getting the second item in here. So to show you guys, I'm going to text edit, text. I'm going to set that to a string of the one index. Uh, of the data. So you see this is where we're starting off. This is where we split it. I'm looking to split it right here. So that way we only have this line. And all of this is going to be its own section again. So that's what we're doing right here on this line. On line 20 here. So we're just going to split that off. And then I'm going to replace the spaces. There we go. If I just move that over there. there we go. So I'm going to find all these spaces and I'm going to replace them with nothing. That way we get just the price. And then I can use that to, of course, play into my text, which is what you guys saw in the beginning there. I just reopen this now. And you see now we got current price and then the information that we got out of that. Now, if you want, you can go through there and you can look for the title as well. So you say the current price of this item is this price. So you can go through and do it like that. Um, but that's how you would do web scraping. So if you want to do like a price tracker and maybe have that going off in the background, uh, checking on a price every now and then or, uh, or other things. Uh, now to keep in mind, some websites is actually going to require uh, that you go through their API to access their information. For example, Twitch. Uh, you can't just use this to get a, get the information from someone's title, for example. Or the game, you actually have to go through their API and go through that whole thing. But that's how you can do some web scraping to find some information on a specific page.